Welcome back folks to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Now today I'm going to take you on a journey at the rocky shore. So today we're going to look at what the rocky shore is and I'm um, going to take you on a beautiful journey. I will tell you this journey will be absolutely amazing. Now the rocky shore is one of the most difficult ecosystem to live in very harsh very very difficult however it is very diverse in terms of organisms right very very diverse so the rocky shore is pretty much a coastal shore which is predominantly rocks okay so it's predominantly made up of rocks different types of rocks generally the rocks are very hard all right Generally, the rocks are very hard. Now, this journey will be generally or uh, mostly pictorial. So, it will be mostly by viewing and seeing different things as that money, rocky shore. But I'll give you some information as I go along. All right. So, the first thing I want to look at, folks, is some of the factors that may affect the rocky shore. Okay. And as I said before, this is a very, very difficult difficult environment to live in however the organisms that live there they adapt to these harsh conditions so when we look at some of these conditions that make this really really difficult is one is that you will always have changing tide okay so the level of the tide will always be changing you also have changing in light okay so based on the exposure of sunlight or deep the water is based on the tide then they will get certain level of sunlight and so on so the light intensity will change from day to day or even within that same day there also will be a change in temperature all right generally because um they're there the rocky shore is there in the open um sun there's not much of a shade per se with some exception on the rocks but generally it is exposed to the external environment ends you will have a change in temperature so whatever the external temperature is generally the organism will face those temperatures all right now and next thing is, is a change in salinity again based on tide and even rainfall the salinity level will change all right in the rocky shore also there is a great chance of exposure to predators all right so these are very very difficult situation to live in folks in fact the organism are there they're always at risk for different things to happen and you can imagine when i go through the pictures you're going to see um how beautiful this ecosystem is however it is very harsh and also very diverse at the same time and uh, before i even go any further i wanted to just take a, a, a view of this beautiful spot absolutely amazing absolutely amazing however now the the rocky shore may be classified based on their zone okay and so the zones of the rocky shore may be in different um based on different tidal regions okay so the first part of rocky shore is normally called a permanently wet zone or the low tide zone which simply means it's always on the water whether the tide is high or whether the tide is low doesn't really matter okay and then you have the the tidal zone all right and the tidal zone is pretty much where you have that area of rocks that will only be covered when the tide is high all right and then you have, will have what they call a tidal pool zone where some small pocket of water will capture water when the tide is high and then the tide recede getting lower and so the remain of water in those pockets of rock we call a tidal pool just like a pool but there are many pools generally speaking right and then now we have what we call the splash zone or the spray zone and that zone is the last part that only get wet when water splashes against the rock and those and the, and the sea spray will catch those part all right and so those are the zones of the rocky shores generally but folks this trip that i'm going to take you on this journey is going to be absolutely amazing okay so let's get into it now this first view 
um, pretty much is a show the type of rocks that are there some of these rocks are high in calcium and you're gonna see the importance of these calcium rock and as I go along let me just talk about the importance of these things right and so the calcified rocks the rocks that are rich in calcium they are very important for the coral ecosystem folks yes they are very important for the coral ecosystem how because these calcified rock contain what they call calcium carbonate and calcium carbonate when dissolved in the water eventually absorbed by conch which you which they use to make their shells yes so these rocks are also very important as well all right they're not so hard the one is special on your right they're not so hard the blood of calcium um, present in these rocks and so they are very important in making um, shells for organisms. The, the organism absorb those and make their shell. Just as we absorb calcium from our food and we make strong bones. The same thing with them. They absorb it from the water. When these rocks dissolve, use it to make the hard shell. And you know the, the reason for those shells for protection. So it's absolutely amazing about this ecosystem. It's very, very beautiful and it's very dynamic. Yes, it's a very harsh environment at the same time. All right. Now, this other picture again is just a low tide um, situation where um, the rocks start to be exposed to the elements, to the sunlight and so on. But still yet, amazing, absolutely amazing. Now, tidal pool example right here, especially on the left, you can look at the left side there. There's a tidal pool. If you notice, the water is receding and water will remain in those pockets of rocks for a period of time. Now, tidal pool will have some advantage advantages and disadvantages right so let's think about one advantage here for a tidal pool now a tidal pool um once water is there um small organism juvenile fish for example could still remain there um and still have water to f and, and still have crevices of the rocks to hide and so on right so that could be an advantage for them also it could also be a disadvantage right because sadly um, these organisms, because the, the, the body of water is so small, then they will be easier to catch by predators. And even persons who are walking on the beach or on the rocky shore may see, may see these organisms and want to remove them from their natural habitat, right? So they can be exposed easier, all right? But at the same time, if the tide is low, at least water can be available in those pockets and they can survive for a period of time, all right? Now, again this is the same low tide situation that we have before um, going through that all right and so i'm looking at some organism here that um i've seen on the rocky shore so we have the chiton on the left all right and we have the bleeding tooth on the right and also some muscles so we have the bleeding tooth way over the right corner and then uh, of course there's one here as well and we have some here and then these in the bottom right will be our muscles okay look, let's talk about something here though before we move on all right just hold the breath just a minute because there's much more greatness to come now the chitin if you notice around the chitin it is a membrane structure like okay and the the reason for this the reason for this and is another is an ab adaptation for these organisms no folks now imagine now on a low tide when there's no water these organisms secrete a mucus right they secrete a mucus that will that will eventually become dry and and trap the water inside of their exoskeleton or their shell for those who have shell and so they help to retain water in their body so they don't dry out right because imagine exposing the sun and evaporation taking place so they secrete that mucus to prevent water loss all right and so their body could still be moist and hydrated at the same time right so that's very important for those so the chitin is very very good in doing that and of course even the bleeding tooth and any form of shell organism they will tend to do that as well um the muscle is a little bit more different because the muscle is a bivalve type of organism which means they can fold open in two and so a part of them will still be exposed and if you notice how the the they gather around so gathering in a cluster will help to create some shade so that is very unique and brilliant of them in it so it's very very brilliant it's very very unique for them to actually cluster to kind of create a shade and a matter of fact they'll find themselves more in the crevices 
of the rocks so they will still be covered by rocks and will be shaded will be shaded and protected at the same time so it's a clever move by the by the muscles all right now um we're looking again another shellfish here on the left which is a form of the bleeding tooth as well and on your right you will see a sea urchin now sea urchin they are very unique i will say they're very 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 unique one in that if you notice they always tend to hide on the crevices of rocks so there's a form of protection for them also they will have these spikes all right and these spikes is general for protection if you step on them yes you're going to feel it yes you're going to feel some pain definitely so it's protecting them organisms sometimes will be intimidated to try to eat them because of the spikes and of course you don't want those things to get in your skin because it will be pain okay so they have their own defenses and so on to live under those conditions all right now our next um viewing right here we talk, we're seeing a coral on the left side and it's known as a lesser star coral it's absolutely beautiful especially when it is brightly colored um when it's full of zooxanthellae we talked about zooxanthellae before all right and so the problem that this lesser star coral may face is that it can become stress because of the level of salt which is salinity and it can also become stress because of the temperature and especially if the tide is really really low then the more penetration of sunlight the heat is there on them directly and the zooxanthellae that live in them can become stressed and when they become stressed you know what happened next it simply means they lose their color and the symbiotic relationship we talked about before will also be lost and so they become they can become bleached because of this situation however it turns out to be you now that the tide is not low for an extreme long period of time which is great act of nature okay on the right you see a bo gregory um very nice beautiful fish this, this is a juvenile form um i must say very, very uh, a very young fish in its juvenile stage and these uh, bo gregory they tend to find themselves in the small crevices of rocks as well and try to hide from their predators all right and of course they, they they're good in doing that because they can fit in small spaces based on the shape of their body and so on all right and if you notice the two color um that they have on them can sometimes be a little bit of a counter shading in a sense all right not fully but yet it can be depending on the side you're looking at them they can be disguised in certain places especially the top being dark the bottom being lighter and so on all right now a next thing to look at here is what you call a frill fin goby um this little creature here is kind of a unique i mean trust me being on the rocky shore folks it is one of the most beautiful things these things have been popping all over the place they be jumping they be they, they, they sometimes I, I think they are flying um but the unique thing about these goby all right is that if you look at their color folks they tend to camouflage if you notice here the zoom in picture versus the one that you're seeing here they're very small um but they camouflage could pretty well with the rocks all right you, you really have to look for them really good but sometimes they see you coming in they pop underneath the crevices of the rocks you really can't find them you see them at at the moment and in a split second they're gone 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 all right and sometimes um they do some some flicks from from one pool to the not to another pool um sometimes they're unfortunate to not to reach the pool but yes they are unique in, in doing those flips from pool to pool all right very very unique and beautiful um fish however all right what you can also find on the rocky shore you may see the white scroll algae very nice and beautiful um you know if you look at them real close you can see the, the contour lines and so on and they look like it wrapped as a scroll pretty much all right you know and so on um we also notice we have seen seagull on the rocky shore and of course you're going to know that this is a predator this is a 
predator just waiting to see those little creatures peeking out they just grab and eat right and so the 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 organisms that live there really have to hide really have to camouflage themselves really have to protect themselves because trust me they are being ready to be eaten by predators such as seagull all right and trust me no seagull works they do not play as they see something they grab it and they're moving all right so definitely um it is a real competition on the rocky shore and generally speaking folks it's a very very beautiful place yet very harsh situation to live in all right you also may find on the rocky shore what they call the fuzzy finger alga all right or algae um, a lot of them alga singular right and so this right here now is a, a example of fuzzy finger now unfortunately this picture was taken at a very low tide so they were exposed and if they exposed for a period for a long period of time then they become dehydrated and sometimes they can also die um, in the midst of this we want to talk about this um, algae that in the middle right here which is the mermaid glass you're going to see a better picture of that coming up soon and of course this uh, fuzzy finger was underwater which is kind of a little bit better and you can notice the color of the water around the fuzzy finger they're kind of um, taking the pigment that is inside of these fuzzy finger all right and so we also have red um the red sea urchin okay we look at a sea urchin before which is mostly dark in color general that's a basic color or the general color for sea urchin is kind of dark but we also have some that are red okay and um this this one find itself into that little space and stays there grow there all right, this is um, a closer version of a fuzzy finger that is the wet version right there. You notice the difference between it and the one that is um, or was exposed. Over this side are some exposed fuzzy fingers as well, and they, be they can become dried and calcified as well, right? So those are things that um, these organisms have to face, being exposed to direct sunlight, l l less water over a period of time sometimes because of the low tide situation definitely now this here is the mermaid's wine glass really beautiful algae really look like a wine glass um so it's called mermaid's wine glass all right now we also have the orange sponge so you can see the sponge formation it rocks very very beautiful and in fact this scenery is kind of a little diverse situation here because you can see some sea urchin there and there you see a lesser star coral as well and oh yes there is a goby right here you could see um where i'm pointing to there is a goby and i know they tend to hide and luckily i could spot him and the goby is right here that i'm hovering over you could see that little goby hiding right there it's camouflaged so easily and so beautifully it blends right in right so that's goby is there so notice camouflaging is one of the most predominant thing for organism to hide from predators okay so animals or organisms on the rocky shore tend to camouflage they tend to hide under crevices of rocks they secrete mucus to retain water in their body to prevent um, dehydration and some of them will have spines spines or spikes to prevent them from being eaten by certain predators okay and so again some of them have also have hard shells and when you have hard shells, sometimes other organisms cannot bite you hard shells. Neither they can pull you off the rocks because they're so bound tightly to the rocks. So there are many features and, uh, and adaptation that these organisms have that enable them to survive in this harsh environment. Okay. Now, let's look at some, animal, um, some plant life. You may find some plant life on the rocky shore as well. Generally, though, these plant life will be closer um towards the land because the rocky shore is really between the land and the, the the ocean itself okay so you see it between the sea and the ocean um on the land so the rocky the rocky shore is between both so moving away from the shore towards the land after you pass the rock, rocky area you'll find some um plant life so the sea purslane is one of the most common one closer to the, the rocks itself you will see those they they can grow pretty much in those small spaces where you find the sand the soil all right and they enable to grow because they, they are runners and they will run and they will be able to find their food and nutrients um in those small pockets of soil or sand now the diagram and you on the right it's a very unique um picture because it shows another 
secret to the rocky shore because you will find things like crabs running under these little spaces for shelter. Notice the, sh the contour of shade that is there. So while the tide is low, organism can find themselves there, hide under those um, spots um, from the sun being sheltered from the, the direct sunlight. And so they, you know, they will be shaded, they will be keep cool and so on. All right. So that's a very, very good, unique spot for these little um, animals to, to hide out. All right. And um, a next type of um, plants that you may find on the rocky shore, um, I've seen buttonwood, um, very beautiful um, type of mangroves. It's a mangrove that normally be inland. So you may find it after the rocks going more closer to land itself. So you see the buttonwood there. You also find casserina. But the thing with casserina now, folks, casserina tend to be an invasive species. Because casserina produce those needle-like structures, and those needle-like structures can actually poison the soil around them and prevent other plants from growing. Okay, so casserina can be poisonous. So this is in the, in the far um, region. Notice it uh, moving from the sand, going to the rocks, and then further out to where you see the land, you will see some casserina. You may also find sea grape as well. So you'll see some sea grape there. Um, on certain spot of the rocky shore so it's a common plant to find on the rocky shore folks so please make sure you note that you may see buttonwood um, closer to the land you may see the sea grape you may also see the casserina plant but you can also make a note that casserina is an invasive species all right now to finish up this folks and of course i've dealt with this before but i cannot cannot avoid mention this now going on the rocky shore experience that beauty folks and i know i realize that hey coming back from those nice spots i have seen these garbage and these are i are not they're not pleasant they're not pleasant at all they're really really sore to the eye now let's talk about the the, the danger with this let's start with the one from the left now imagine small fish um, get captured into these bottles, right? Just imagine. And then the tide becomes low. And these fish now will get stuck into this. No oxygen or much oxygen going in it. And then what will happen next is that the water becomes stagnated, low in oxygen, and these poor little fish will die. Okay? They will die because of our selfish actions. And look at this one in the middle, right? That... Is a broken bottle. There are many potential dangers for this. Many potential dangers for this one. One, you could be walking on the rocky shore, step on it, fall on it, you get injury. Otherwise, when high tide, small piece of these um, broken bottles could be eaten by organisms. And of course, it could cause some disorder in the digestive tract as well, right? Now, on the right, oh my word, on the right. Now, high tide will come. Okay, if you notice, there's a tidal pool behind it, right? So the high tide will come. Possibly take this bottle out in the deeper body of water. The plastic bag, huh, the plastic bag, folks, can now become ripped, right? And then piece of that plastic bag now floating around in the water. Fish confuse, or even some fish that eat jellyfish may confuse and, and think this jellyfish. Um, try to eat it and then it stuck in their digestive tract and then eventually kill these organisms folks right and not to mention if the plastic bag the chemicals from the plastic bag also get into these fish and by accumulate eventually we're going to be affected by it okay so these are things that we should not should not do and discourage people from doing pick up behind themselves simply dump their garbage Enjoy the beauty of the rocky shore. Enjoy the beauty of the beaches. But do not leave your garbage. Do not leave it. Dump your garbage. Dump it. Okay, so at this point now, folks, I leave you. And I hope you enjoy that scenery of the rocky shore. This nice, beautiful rocky shore. So again, folks, you want to see more of these type of video. Feel free to learn some science. Continue learning. And I see you in the next video. But remember, subscribe to continue watching and get your notifications. See you in the next lesson.